Tiamat, a primordial mother and divine female in Mesopotamian mythology, plays a crucial role in life and death. She represents the salty waters of creation and the ocean, known for its prolific capacity to generate living organisms, becomes the birthplace of life. However, alongside life, Tiamat is also associated with the creation of monsters. In ancient Mesopotamian mythology, Tiamat gives birth to 11 different frightening beasts, ranging from dragons to scorpion men. But is Tiamat herself truly terrifying? Is the mother of monsters also a monster? In Monstrum, hosted by Dr. Emily Zarka, much of Mesopotamian mythology attributes natural phenomena to intelligent deities. The irrigation agricultural system's early adoption in the region defined its success and development, making rainfall particularly significant. Soil conditions often led to flooding and salinization, making cultivation challenging and seemingly at the whim of the gods. Hence, a central myth emerged involving two primordial bodies of water, Apsu, the source of all fresh water, and Tiamat, the source of all salt water. The written history of Tiamat begins in the Enuma Elis, also known as the Babylonian Epic of Creation, dating back to around the second half of the second millennium BCE. Tiamat's appearance in this text is somewhat ambiguous, revealing her femininity and her composition from water. She is depicted as somewhat humanoid, but little else is known about her. The mingling of primordial deities involved biological reproduction, with Apsu as the begetter and father of all, and Tiamat as the mother who births all from her womb. All the original gods in the Mesopotamian pantheon are produced by these two, and as their progeny procreates, each god becomes more powerful than the previous one. Ea, also known as Nudimud, is the champion among his fathers, a god of wisdom, magic, and water, known for his trickery and mischief. He and the other gods amused themselves within Tiamat's belly, where they lived. One day, Ye overhears Apsu complaining to Tiamat about their children and suggesting that they be killed. Tiamat refuses, proposing a more lenient approach, but Apsu ignores her. In response, Ye slays Apsu and uses his body to create a new dwelling place, morbidly named Apsu. At this point, Tiamat is still pregnant with the next generation of gods, and Ye's son, Marduk, emerges as the strongest of them all. Marduk is gifted with the power of the four winds, and he uses them to stir up a flood wave in Tiamat's womb, causing turmoil among the gods. As an act of retaliation, Tiamat gives birth to eleven monsters to challenge the other gods' dominion. Panicked by this sudden influx of creations, the other gods grant Marduk the power to create and destroy. Marduk further equips himself with various weapons and prepares for battle. He provokes Tiamat with insults, causing her to launch into a hasty attack, leaving herself vulnerable. Marduk captures her in a net, and with the help of the winds, he pierces her stomach with an arrow, tearing her open. He then subdues her monstrous children before finally crushing her skull with a mace and slitting her arteries. Marduk uses one half of Tiamat's dead body to form the heavens and the other to craft the earth. From her eyes, he creates the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, and from her breasts, he makes mountains. The remaining parts of her body become the oceans. Marduk also forms images of Tiamat's monstrous offspring to remind the world of their existence, placing them at the entrance of the dwelling Apsu. The story of Tiamat can be better understood by examining earlier, seemingly disparate mythologies that eventually blended together to create her narrative. The number 11, significant in Tiamat's creation of monsters, also appears in other older Mesopotamian lore, such as the tale of Ninurta, where the god slew 11 enemies before designing the world. Additionally, Sumerian texts from the late 3rd millennium BCE contain a list of monster kin similar to those attributed to Tiamat. Moreover, there are monstrous deities associated with the tumultuous sea, like the Canaanite god Yam, he is described as both a serpent and a dragon with seven heads, wielding chaotic power depending on the source. Tiamat, like Yam, met her defeat at the hands of a heroic young god named Baal. 
In a text from central Mesopotamia around 2350 BCE, Tiamat is mentioned as the patron of a fierce warrior. The Canaanite and Sumerian narratives do not depict Tiamat as a monster, but rather as a powerful god. She is revered and feared with respectful reverence, not outright horror, suggesting she is more of a potentially monstrous god rather than strictly a monster. To be considered a monster by Sumerian or Akkadian standards, creatures were not categorized by a singular word, but their monstrosity was characterized by a combination of predatory animal features like teeth, wings, and claws. These visual traits were later associated with Tiamat during the Middle Bronze Age and First Millennium. Marduk, initially a local god presiding over Babylon, gained mythical status with the rise of Hammurabi, the sixth king of Babylon. The Code of Hammurabi, a legal text based on the laws of retribution, helped solidify Hammurabi's rule, and Marduk's defeat of Tiamat symbolized the triumph of order over chaos. Marduk, also known as Bel, became the new national god, representing the victory of good over evil and law over lawlessness, supporting Hammurabi's right to rule. The myth of Tiamat and Marduk's battle was ritually portrayed during the spring agricultural festival called Akitu, which later became a New Year celebration lasting into the Hellenistic period. However, as time passed, Tiamat's story was largely forgotten until the 19th century when the Enuma Elis was translated into English, bringing Tiamat into the limelight of popular culture. Canadian author and clergyman George A. Barton played a significant role in shaping the modern perception of Tiamat. In his 1893 article, he compared Tiamat to the biblical serpent Leviathan and the great red dragon of Revelations, describing her as a female dragon, the queen of a hideous and hostile host. This portrayal, driven by religious beliefs and Barton's bias, contributed to the demonization of Tiamat. Subsequently, Tiamat was commonly depicted as a demonic figure, even though in her best light, she was seen as the bad mother in the story. In popular culture today, Tiamat is often associated with an evil dragon status. In Dungeons and Dragons, Tiamat is portrayed as a daughter of the dragon creator god Io, engaging in constant battle with her brother, Bahamut. In Final Fantasy, she appears as a multi-headed dragon and is portrayed as a top-level boss, though her number of heads decreases as the franchise evolves. Tiamat's 11 monstrous children bear traits that could be seen as precursors to various mythical creatures like mermaids, sirens, minotaur, Bigfoot, and others. Unlike her godly offspring, Tiamat's monstrous children were independently formed, adding to their threatening and mysterious nature. Tiamat represents both nurturing and destructive aspects, embodying the roles of mother and monster. The myth of Tiamat and her offspring offers a metaphorical lesson about the fear that our own creations could someday overpower and destroy us.